Hi there YouTube, Big G here from a very cold and wet South Africa. Now I just received a couple of boxes via courier and uh, I must say I'm very excited about these pickups. Just to give you some sort of history, um, about a year ago I started buying some items on eBay in the UK uh, and most of those items, well, very few of the sellers in, in, on eBay in the UK will actually post through to South Africa. So I would miss out on a lot of the good deals that's on, on eBay. And I must say, the guys in the UK, you are lucky bastards. The stuff is so cheap in the UK, especially when it comes to vintage and retro gaming of any sort. It is really, really dirt cheap there. All the prices have started escalating. I've seen that over the last year or so. But it is still, compared to anywhere else in the world, it is still a collector's haven. So what I, what I actually decided on doing was I purchased items that were very cheap and I sent them through to my cousin. My cousin actually lives in a little village called Holt, which is close to Bath in the UK. I visited him last year on holiday. Beautiful little village. And he would keep these items for me until someone could actually bring them back to South Africa. So over the last year, I've been purchasing items. And most of them I've almost forgotten about, that I actually purchased them. And hope they arrived and that they were there by my cousin's place. And... Uh, a few weeks ago he said to me that a work colleague of his was moving back to South Africa or was sending items back to South Africa so my boxes hitched a lift in his container and it arrived in Cape Town and from Cape Town to Mossel Bay from Mossel Bay to East London so one hell of a trek to get these items to South Africa and I'm going to start alphabetically with uh, because there's a number of different systems in these boxes that I uh, received just to give you an indication over 40 kgs these boxes weighed and uh, I'll sh put up a picture and you can see how large these boxes were so a hang of a lot of stuff uh, and it's going to give me a lot to show you over the next couple of months when I do gameplays and so forth so I thought I'd start off with Atari and uh, alphabetically and uh, yeah let's have a look at what I received and first item very excited about I've been wanting one of these for a hang of a long time and that is a Atari I think it's the XE system. Uh, you can see a very. It basically, if you had to take an Atari 600XL computer, 8-bit computer, and you had to mate it to a Atari console, I think a 5200 or so, this is what you'd end up with. Basically, it's a Atari 8-bit computer, but uh, you don't have to use the keyboard. You can uh, just use it as a console. And I know Steve Benway did a video recently on it. And uh, when I saw that, I just had to have one of these. I mean, this is fantastic. I love the way it looks. I love the color scheme that they did on it. It's very different to anything else that I've seen when it comes to the 8-bit uh, computers or consoles. Uh, because it's a one-of-a-kind. I mean, there's nothing else like it. So I'm very excited with that. And this came uh, with the cables as well as uh, a power supply. I haven't tested it yet. The seller said that uh, it's working. But uh, if it's not working, I've got a bit of a problem because, you know, I'm a couple of thousand kilos away from him. It's not much that I can actually do. Um, and then the games that, I, that came with the system. And not all of these games came with that particular buyer. Uh, these are all different lots. Uh, what I would do is, I'd have a look at anything that was really cheap. And I'd put in a bit and then, and then leave it. Forget about it. If I'm successful, I'm successful. If not, tough. So, first one up, and I'm not sure what these games are like is uh, Desert Falcon, Crystal Castles, Dark Chambers, Bug Hunt, I think it's a very popular game this because there's a hang of a lot of those bug hunts uh, on eBay. Next one is Load Runner, Battle Zone, Flight Simulator 2, and uh, that, w that wasn't the only Atari goodies that I, I bid on. Sticking with the Atari theme, let me just grab here. Uh, some more of these left cartridges. These are great. I, I received one from the Highlander the other day. And since then I've been enjoying it and I've bid and purchased a few more. So the first one is uh, Pac-Man. And that I have played. And uh, Star Raiders as well. I've also played. It actually seems like quite an interesting game. And then a, a leaflet for, for Pac-Man. Uh, staying with the Atari theme, uh, I also 
was successful with a Atari ST game, no idea what it's like, Lancelot. Oh, I think it was a couple of P. Uh, pence or whatever your, your currency is there in the UK. But all I know, it was dirt cheap. Um, there's so many bargains on eBay in the UK, it's, it's unbelievable. But anyway, that's, that's the Atari goodies that I've got. Okay, staying with the A's as we're going alphabetically. The next system I got, also very excited about, uh, it's the first uh, Acorn A3000 that I have. And let me just hold this beast up. Acorn Archimedes. Fantastic looking machine. I love the colors. I love the way it looks like a Atari ST. I, I, I like that format. The machines that actually... And then it's got the, the drive on the side there. Um, this machine actually came from my cousin. Lying around somewhere. My shop was going to be turfed out somewhere. As I said, uh, retro and vintage goodies in the UK are just lying around it sounds like it. Uh, so before somebody turfed it, uh, he grabbed it for me and sent it across. Hell of a heavy machine this. Um, I've seen quite a few of them on eBay. They go, they don't go for much money, but because of the weight, the postage for them is incredibly expensive. And staying with Acorn, uh, let me just put this down. We move on to a machine that I've, I've wanted for a long time, uh, and that is the good old Electron, Acorn Electron. Wonderful looking machines. It's got a lovely feel to it. Very solid machines these. They weren't popular in South Africa or any, any of the Acorn machines simply because of their price. They were incredibly expensive back in the day. But uh, these are lovely machines. You see it's got the cables that came with it. Uh, actually got two of them in one lot very very cheaply. I uh, couldn't believe it. It was almost for nothing basically. I think the, the, the postage to my cousin's place was five times more than what it cost to actually purchase them. And there's another one. Um, it's even got a little protective case that goes over it. Uh, power supplies, it was sold as untested so I'm going to fiddle and faff around with that. Uh, let me just grab the software. Now this is the BBC software for the Electron um, as well as uh, maybe something works on the Archimedes but uh, this was a number of different lots and uh, they went also for dirt cheap so I'm not going to hold up each and every one as you can see a lot of games there's some classics that I'm really looking forward to try I'm not sure what the Electron was like as a games machine um, as I've never I've never played one before I've never tried it before um, you can see Airwolf there, Star Maze Chess, Beachhead, I remember playing that on the uh, Spectrum Snooker, so it looks like a lot of ports that have come across from the other 8-bit Thunderball I'm not sure, Exploding Fist, Way of the Exploding Fist, classic game on the Spectrum that Gunsmoke uh, and then also a lot of uh, pirated stuff as well as you can see um, so I'm going to be going through these and when I get time and I'll do different gameplay videos on these as well as I get time but otherwise a whole host of tapes for the Acorn Electron okay sticking with the A's we move on to Amstrad and another CPC 464 I'm hoping that this one will work um, after, this is my second CPC six, uh, 464 um, also in very poor condition very dirty and dusty I haven't cleaned it up at all but I think this cost less than a pound so it, it was for nothing um, I couldn't pass that up whether it worked or not sold as untested which generally means they have tested it and it doesn't work um, so I picked that one up and then a whole lot of games as well just in case I manage to get one of them up and running so that I can actually start testing them and he has a whole host of taped games for the Amstrad CPC 464 um, also a lot of titles that I'm familiar with on other systems you know Ghost, Ghostbusters uh, there's a whole lot of stuff here uh, all sorts, uh, Paperboy I remember playing that, there's another Ghostbusters there's Airwolf 2 um, and so yes a lot of different games and then also some without even a their covers uh, as I said these were going for next to nothing I'm sure the guys are just turfing them uh, and moving on to SD solutions for their stuff so you know if they want to get rid of it I'll take it and uh, I'll try give it a play because I mean I've never played any of these games on the Amstrad so. moving on to the C's we move to Commodore and a very nice boxed Commodore 64 in really good condition and I do have a Commodore 64 like this I think this is a 64C in my uh, collection but I don't have a boxed one and this went so cheaply on eBay that I just couldn't pass it up 
and uh, I'll still clean it up and everything but uh, you can see pretty much everything is intact I'm sure it's working although I, I think it was sold as working I can't remember I mean it's been many months since I purchased these things and they've been sitting and waiting for me and uh, yeah so I'm looking forward to getting this Commodore 64 up and running and then a couple of games for the Commodore 64 well, not really much I think these were just stuck in the box uh, just two tape games so that's it for the Commodore 64 okay working our way up the alphabet we move on to M and that would be the MSX now uh, if you've watched any of my previous videos you know that I'm a big fan of the MSX 8-bit computers so I managed to purchase another two new MSX computers uh, for my collection no idea whether they work they were sold as untested but who knows fiddle and faff on them maybe you get them up and running the first one is a Canon what is this V20 I like the look of it uh, and that's one thing that I really enjoy about the MSX computers yes they were all part of a standard but each one had its own identity each one had its own coloring shape size etc which makes them so interesting and so collectible you can see these huge big square arrow keys direction keys there on the uh, Canon so different to any of the others so great addition to my collection I hope it works maybe it does maybe I'm lucky uh, and then another one which is actually in very good condition and uh, that is a Toshiba uh, what is this Toshiba 64k as well HX10 I think this was a very popular MSX machine uh, I've seen quite a few of them up on eBay for in the UK as well as in Europe and I like the coloring of it I like the direction keys I like the blue colors over there with the red on the stop so once again it's got a, a nice individual character to it and uh, this one is in actually very good condition and I'm sure that this one is working so I'm looking forward to trying this uh, MSX out so very very happy about another two computers to add to my MSX collection and then uh, I also purchased a lot of games for the MSX but mostly all tape stuff the cartridge games are incredibly expensive uh, so I'm gonna have to just keep on searching for those uh, which is a pity but anyway you can see there a handful of cartridge uh, tape games and there's some strange titles in here this will be the name of this one this will be describes what sort of what sort of game it is but uh, very descriptive it can be a load of rubbish who knows what they are but uh, looking forward to trying them out as well as uh, this one I'm actually looking forward to gauntlet and then another compilation over there as well as an, uh, a big box from uh, level 9 an adventure game so I'm not sure what they are like uh, but I'll give gameplays on them once I get the machines up and running so that's the M's and now let's move on to uh, Nintendo and I've got a couple of Nintendo goodies uh, the first thing is a very nice boxed NES control deck very nice I, I don't have a box machine I've had a couple of these control decks and uh, I like these let me just open it up here I need to still clean it all up I see that the only thing that it's missing is the power supply um, but otherwise it actually looks like it's in pretty good condition and I see that there's even a game in it which is let's see oh okay Super Mario 2 so I've got a game there it's still got the manual the box is in really good condition so I'm happy with that I'm sure it works uh, these are quite robust machines other little Nintendo goodies also once again games that I bought for that were going on eBay for under a pound uh, I know I need this is Nintendo scope I know I need the gun I must still get that uh, Jurassic Park what is this Star Wars uh, and then two box games these were like also for nothing so I'm sure they must be crap games uh, Nigel Mansell uh, World Championship and cool spot boxes are not in great condition but it's still always great to have the actual boxes so that is the Nintendo goodies then we move on to Sega uh, and this was also like for next to nothing I do have Sega machines in my system in my collection uh, I've got the original Master System, this is the Master System 2 uh, and it's got the controls and power but it was also going for almost nothing so I had to pick that up and I no idea if it works or not uh, and then some more Vic games I should have actually kept this with the uh, Commodore stuff 
and a C. But anyway, let's stick with V for Vic. 20 games. Uh, Sargon Chess. It's got the cartridge inside. Uh, Golf. Boxes are really tatty in that. But at least it's got the manuals and it's got the cartridges inside. And what is this? Pirate Cove. Uh, let's see there. Pirate Cove. And I really enjoy these cartridges on the Vic 20 system. Um, some of the games are actually really good. I've done some gameplays on them. And I'll do gameplays on these as well. So that is the Vic 20. Then we move on to my Sinclair stuff, the ZX Spectrum stuff. That there is a host of ZX Spectrum stuff uh, in, in eBay UK. Uh, so many of the actual machines. Uh, I didn't really bid on any of the machines because I have most of them in my collection. I would have liked to have a QL. I'm still after a QL, but they they tended to go for, just for too much money. They still get. You know, I, I need to look harder for one. I'll eventually pick up one. Uh, and also the postage costs for them are exorbitant. So the the first thing was a, a Kura Micro, what is this, Kura Micro Speech, I've always wanted one of these uh, to mess around with, and came with a manual as well, and a host of games, all sorts, some games I've actually played before, some I've never even heard of, some nice big box games as well with all sorts of stuff, I mean there's Uridium, what a classic game, uh, some stuff that I've never tried for, uh, Return of the Jedi, but a lot of the old classic games, a lot of them are duplicates of what I have already. Uh, these were just different lots that I bought that for stuff that went for under a pound. You know, you're under a pound and you get a whole box of Spectrum games, which is great. And I actually do enjoy, I don't mind sitting and waiting while I load up these games, even though I know I can play them on an emulator, because, uh, yeah, it's part of the nostalgia, is sitting there and waiting to see if the game actually does load. So... That's my Sinclair goodies that I got. And then something a little different that my cousin threw in as well. A little Palm Pilot. Uh, I'm not sure if it works or not. So I'm going to charge it up and see if it works. I've never actually had one of these little Palm Pilots. I'm not sure how old it is. Um, but it looks like an interesting little bit of kit. Fits nicely in the hand. Maybe it works. Well guys, that was what was in those boxes. As you can see, a whole host of stuff. Uh, a lot of different systems, some new systems for me. So I'm very excited. Uh, over the next few weeks, I'm going to do a lot of gameplays for you as I go through, see what is working, what is not working. Uh, but otherwise, I am absolutely over the moon with this haul that I managed to pull off. As I said earlier, it's taken a year in the making to get all this stuff across the sea, over here to South Africa. Uh, some new systems, some new games, a lot of new items for me to mess around with. So I'm very, very happy with it. I hope you enjoyed that video. Cheers, guys.